We hope that our research will help young Asians realize how much they benefit from peace. 长期以来，世界上最致命的战争仅发生在一个地区——东亚。它包括中国、日本、韩国、蒙古和十个东南亚国家。从1840年左右的鸦片战争开始，爆发的战争不计其数。从1946年到1979年，在战争中丧生的所有人中，有超过百分之八十死于东亚。Then in 1979, something happened. The figures dropped. The countries stopped fighting each other, and you also had fewer internal wars. And if we look at the period since 1989, only 3.6 percent of those killed in the whole world have been killed in East Asia. Norway historian Stan Tornason, in Sweden's Uppsala University, led the development of the East Asia Peace Project. 六年来，他和来自欧洲、亚洲和美洲的二十五位小组研究人员试图回答两个问题：首先，有着如此血腥历史的东亚，为什么突然停止发动战争了？第二，和平的稳定性如何 ？Young Asians today tend to take the peace for granted, and who can blame them? They do not remember the Korean War or the Vietnam War. It did not happen in their lifetime, but They should realize that historically, the peace in their time is unique. 自从转向了和平，东亚在不到两代人的时间里，成为了世界领先的经济区域。如果没有和平，这可能不会发生。但一百四十多年来，英国人、法国人、俄罗斯人、美国人以及其他区域的国家发动了无数次战争。东亚是个火药桶。怎么突然和平呢 ？Let me tell you what I think. I think it has to do with national priorities and leadership. One Asian leader after the other took the decision to give priority to economic growth. The basic idea was make money, not war. 日本是领头羊。一九四五年，它还是一片废墟，不得不组建新政府。但日本决定接受失败，专注于发展经济。They did not seek revenge.、Uh, they did not seek to build up their military again, but they adopted a peace constitution, which prohibited Japan from ever engaging in war again and from having an army. This was written into the famous Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution. 上世纪六十年代，其他国家紧随其后。韩国和印尼放弃了之前与邻国的对抗，推出促进发展的政策。印尼、马来西亚、新加坡、泰国和菲律宾形成东盟及东南亚国家联盟，而台湾变得富有，放下了赢回中国大陆的野心。然而，最大的国家中国呢 ？Only after Mao had died in 1976, did the Chinese leaders really realize. How far they were lagging behind other countries in the region, and then the change came. A new leader, Deng Xiaoping, came to power, and he carried out market economic reforms and he studied the examples of Japan and South Korea. China's economic crisis began to shine a light, and Vietnam waited ten years before it had the same situation. All these policy changes have three things in common. First, the leaders decided. To put economic growth first, and therefore to have stability. Second, they all wanted to have good relations with the United States because they needed U.S. investments, U.S. technology, and access to the American market. And third, they all learned from Japan. They followed the Japanese example, the Japanese model. 那么第二个问题呢？和平稳定吗？ Unfortunately, it does not seem very stable or deep. There are a lot of conflicts still simmering that have been there for a long time. There is also still ongoing civil war in some countries, and there are growing nationalist sentiments in the region. So many young nationalists are now saying, "We used to be poor, but now we are rich and strong, so we can take back those islands we lost in the past." 
，许多学术文章和书籍都出自于该项目。但乌普萨拉大学的主要目标是鼓舞新一代维护和平，使之更加可行。Please remember that this century is the Asian century. The countries of East Asia are deeply integrated with each other economically and also with Europe and the United States. So the future of world peace is decided in East Asia.